Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to Collider Mailbag on this Sunday, the all-mailbag show, where all we do is take your mailbag questions. As you can see, we're not in our regular mailbag digs. There is a bunch of construction going on. We're upgrading our network, and there's... Is this, that what they're doing? They're, yeah, they're upgrading our network. I networks. thought they were building a direct line of... Uh, or, Coca-Cola into your office or Diet Coke or whatever it was. Diet that, Pepsi. Diet Pepsi. Diet I apologize. Pepsi. It, it looked sort of like a uh, a liquid tube going right It does look office. like a liquid tube, yes, does it not? But it no, does. it is the data, the information superhighway. Oh, interesting. Uh, you know, I'm a weird cat that way. I prefer Coke, yeah. but I prefer Diet Pepsi. Huh. So, I don't know. <laughs> What's I, that say about you? I like Marvel and DC. <laughs> I like Coke products, like Pepsi products, whatever. Hey, I'm John Kevin, and of course, I'm being joined, of course, by Josh McCuga. What's up, John? How are you, buddy? I'm doing good. Two so. days in a row. I gotta, listen, I, I'm going to hold on to this jersey for at least a week or so. i got to revel in a back-to-back championship until I start focusing on uh, football season. All right. Well, and football season is coming up. Uh, which I'm corner. super excited about, Absolutely. as a matter of fact. All right, guys, how do you get a question on Mailbag? It's simple. Just make sure you email us anytime at collidervideo at gmail.com. Send on in those questions. We take a Mailbag question every day, Monday through Friday, on Movie Talk. And then here on the weekends, of course, Josh and I on Saturday and Sundays, we take nothing but Mailbag questions. So let's hop to it. And the first question today comes to us from Aqua Panther, who writes... This past summer, Finding Dory became the animated movie with the biggest opening weekend slash domestic box office gross. My question is, do you think Incredibles 2 can take both of these records, considering it's a sequel and audiences have been demanding it for over a decade, and we're now in an era where superhero movies are bigger than ever? Thanks for taking my question and have a great day. This, what do you think? This is like... Uh, like a threefold answer for me, right? Really? Uh, initially, I would say absolutely yes. But then you think about finding Dory having way more of the family appeal than, say, in Incredibles 2, mostly because I think parents uh, have no apprehension about taking their kids to see a Finding Dory. I think parents may have a little bit of apprehension, especially like the, uh, you know, the homes, like the, I don't want to offend too many people, but like the parents are like, oh, I don't want to show violence. And the uh, Incredibles can tend to have just a touch of violence. I mean, it's, it is a bit of a, you know, a superhero kind of a thing. Um, also, uh, you had, you had, you had like 15, what, 15 years between Finding Nemo and Finding Dory, something oh, like I that? Oh, I can't even remember right? how long there was. If you have about that time now, 10, 12 years in between The Incredibles and this new one, uh, I think a lot of it's really going to have to do with word of mouth with The Incredibles because it's the kind of movie that is going to have a big opening weekend. Maybe it doesn't beat the Finding Dory open weekend, but maybe it beats the domestic box office gross based solely on word of mouth because the incredible the first Incredibles was all word of mouth that movie was good that first weekend and then just went gangbusters well okay so the first Incredibles it was 13 years ago okay 13 years ago I mean yeah that, it's a long that, time that's a very very long time and it's uh, and anyway op Finding Dory it's opening weekend was an incredibly impressive 135 it's huge million dollars Wonder Woman didn't even touch that oh no didn't, yeah. didn't come close yeah. I mean but I mean that's a huge huge number I mean the biggest animated opening weekend of all time sure but Incredibles has been like a topic Incredibles the sequel has been a topic of conversation amongst film fans for over 10 years it's like maybe more I mean you yeah. said it was 13 years ago and I would say 12 years 12 months I mean it's like as soon as that came out they're like Incredibles 2 makes so much sense yes yeah. and now look I liked Monsters University very much mm -hmm. nobody was jumping up and down and screaming for a monster sequel mm -hmm. I liked Finding Nemo very much and I like the sequel, Finding Dory, but yeah. nobody was jumping him down demanding a sequel. Yeah. Uh, nobody was demanding a sequel to Cars, yeah, let alone a, a another sequel, so yes. Cars 3. Um, like, so you got all these things, and yet you have what could arguably be the best Pixar movie in Incredibles. I don't, I, to I don't, me, it's tough. Like, Toy Story 3? Toy, you got Toy Story 3. Mm -hmm. You've got Up. Yeah. Ratatouille. Yeah. Uh, Incredibles. I love Wally. -E. Wally. -E. Um, I mean, it goes I, I on and would, on and on. I think I would put Incredibles at the top with Toy Story 3 right underneath. It, it's close. Yeah. So it's definitely, I think with most people, you'll find that the Incredibles would definitely be in the conversation for most people if you're asking mm -hmm. them what is the best Pixar movie of all time. Sure. And yet, you know, it's the superhero genre, which has been hot for a long time now. Yep. And yet they've never gotten around to getting this sequel out. Right. To get to Brad the answer, Bird got busy. Yeah, Brad Bird got very busy. So to get to the answer to the question, does an Incredibles two have 
an opportunity to beat number one the bo- the opening weekend box office record and the domestic box office record. I mean, <laughs> Dory made almost five hundred million. It's ridiculous. Domestically, like four hundred eighty-six million dollars domestically, which is nuts. Does The Incredibles two have the potential to beat it? Yep, you're darn right it, it sure does. Sure, absolutely does. Because like Finding Nemo slash Finding Dory, you've got a nostalgia factor now because it's been like 13 years mm-hmm. since that damn movie came out. Mm-hmm. So you got a lot of people who not only grew up watching it, but now they're parents and they're showing That's it to their kids. That's what I was going to say, the kids factor. So you yeah. got that. The, it is one of the best Pixar movies made. It is a superhero genre film. Mm-hmm. Will it beat it? Hard to say. I, I'll, go, I'll go as far as to say this. It will beat the opening weekend record of Finding Dory. I think it'll beat okay. 135 million, but that 486 million dollars domestically. That's huge. That's that's a tall order for an Avengers movie, for a Justice League movie, for a Star Wars movie. That's a tall order. So I don't know about that one. So uh, Incredibles opening weekend did 70.4 million gross. Crazy. To, that, yeah. that was like 13 years I ago. Know. And gross 261 in the box office. So it did great numbers. I think it can double both of those numbers. I don't disagree. I think it, I think the next Pixar movie to come out, like if any movie coming out that has a chance to take out Finding Dory in the near future, it's got to be The Incredibles. Two. I agree. Yep. All right, let's move on. The next question. And the next question today comes to us from Trek Wars, who writes, with King Arthur, Baywatch, and The Mummy bombing at the box office. I, I, don't forget the international numbers. The Mummy isn't exactly bombing, per se. It's not eating se. it, but... No, it's, it's certainly not a huge success. Anyway, yes. I wanted to know what remaining films this summer do you think will also flop? I say the Emoji Movie and Valerian, the former of which nobody gives a poop emoji about, is, uh, <laughs> and the latter, which stars Cara D- uh, Delevingne, Delevingne. Yep. who nobody wants to see in another movie after her abysmal performance in Suicide yeah, Squad. Speak for yourself on that one. Thanks for taking my question and bring on the filthy. You don't think she was terrible in Suicide oh, Squad? Oh, whoa, whoa. Yeah, she was horrendous. But I like her. I liked her. I she, her eyebrows are a little uh, disarm. Like they're they're a lot. They're like Mark <laughs> I love Ellis. We're talking about her eyebrows. <laughs> her her eyebrows are very Mark Ellisish, very uh, Uncle Leo from Seinfeld, kind of aggressive. But I think that she's a very. Uh, d- I think that Cara Delevingne is the kind of girl that should do like independent period pieces or like something where you have to be a very intense person because she doesn't have the look on her face of pure joy like a Britt Roberts or a um Britt uh, Roberts is great by Britt the way. Roberts is fantastic uh Emma Emma Watson like She's the, great. you know they they have a look on their face of of very welcoming Cara Delevingne is is a is she looks like she's a very intense girl. Like if you met Cara Delevingne at a bar, you'd fall in love right away and then you'd wake up and your kidney would be gone. She's kind of one of those girls. <laughs> <laughs> am, I, am I coming out of left field on this one? Uh, I, I, this Valerian. I'm losing your kidneys. Okay. <laughs> but Valerian to me, there's nothing in that movie that, that really interests me. It just looks kind of like a IMAX space invasion, almost like a video game. The emoji movie could be kind of fun. No. I don't Give me know, one man. of these. One of these one. I I saw. Okay, first of all, I didn't I didn't think the sound of the movie didn't sound very good. Okay, the emoji movie. Okay. Yes. Then the trailer came out because you know, hey, look, we just talked about Daddy's Home Two trailer mm-hmm. on the weekends. Like mm-hmm. that movie had no interest in seeing it. Read blah blah blah. And then I saw the trailer and it's totally on board. Yes. Totally on that. That trailer is hilarious. Yeah. I think two could be better than one. I would be difficult not to be better than yeah, one because I one didn't like the first bad. one very yes. much at all. But I mean. So the trailer for Emoji Movie came out. I thought, okay, maybe one of these situations. That may, now the trailer will sell me the trailer. Because the Lego thing. There's another one. Lego sounded stupid to me. What? None of us were like, man, I can't wait to see the Lego. Movie. And then the Lego trailer came out. And it's like we were right on board. So yep. maybe the same thing happened with the Emoji Movie. Nope. Nope. No? I didn't, I didn't so much as crack a grin one time in that Emoji thing. Let trailer. alone with the big poop joke at the end. Yeah. I mean, that was the poop joke was their crescendo. The poop <laughs> joke is what they ended their trailer. They thought, this is the big laugh to really sell We're going to get you. And it's the poop joke. And mm-hmm. it's like, hey, look, I'm all for poop jokes. You know, that's fine. A good poop joke, sure. Good dick joke, whatever. All the time. Yeah, yeah no absolutely. No problem, but yeah. they got to be funny. And okay. it, it was not funny to me. But there are still going to be people that go and give it a shot because yes. it's an animated you know, film. It's going to make some money. Of course. I really... I, I got a terrible feeling that the Valerian is going to bomb. Yeah, it's going to eat it. Uh, uh, do you know ex- why? Do you know what my, my big theory in this one? No, what's that? Is they're calling it? I know it's based on a. Is it a novel or a novel series or a young adult a graphic no- novel? Graphic novel. Great. All people hear when they think of Valerian is what? 
Game of Thrones. I thought you were going to say STD. No. But <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, it doesn't, doesn't it sound like an STD it, it really a little does. bit? Oh, God. Uh, uh, Josh, I've, I've got some bad news for it. You've got Valerian. You've got Valerian. <laughs> it's a mix between malaria and gonorrhea. It's terrible. <laughs> oh, God, we're all going to die. Um, no, Valerian is the Valerian steel using the sword that, that can kill the oh, White Walkers in the Game of Thrones. Thrones. You know yes. what? You're right. I didn't even and put that like, together. And they're like, oh, Valerian the movie. It might be a prequel to Dragons. Nope. And now it just looks like running through space but i don't think anybody's gonna see the trailer and mistake no, of course it for not. a game of thrones no, you're right. spinoff <laughs> game of thrones in space but i yeah. mean he, there's a couple reasons they spent a lot of money on it the trailers have been more this is always a mistake yeah that when trailers go to make look how artistic this is because look I, i'll full credit the trailer is beautiful it's to look at. Yeah. I mean, the, some of the stuff they're doing in it visually is profoundly good. Like, mm -hmm. really, really solid. Mm -hmm. But it did nothing to get me interested in the movie. Yeah. I really don't think a lot of people saw it and got interested. I'm sure they, I'm, all film is subjective. All trailers are subjective. So I'm yeah. sure a bunch of people did like it, and that's great. But the only I'm, way I see the Valerian making a ton of money is word of mouth. Because based on initial tracking, it's not really. Well, you know, like about forty percent of your money is made in the opening weekend. I know. So I they got to, and I don't. I just don't think. I don't see audiences rushing out no. to see this. And Cara Delevingne, uh, look, you were you went. And the and other guy, what's the other guy? Uh, uh, oh, he's a Dane terrific actor. Dane DeHaan, he's, he's a terrific great. actor. He's, he's a, a terrific great. actor. Yes. yes. But I mean, Cara Delevingne, like you took a very long road around describing her. I'll just, I'll just <laughs> sum it up in this: she can't act. <laughs> Uh, she she can't act. I mean, you listed off this huge laundry list of of actresses who are incredible performers, incredible sure. actresses. Yeah. And how I, I don't know how performers like Cara Delevingne uh, get roles. I'm not really sure. Like Paper um, Towns was not great. But but I'll say this. You know, she didn't. Um, Cara Delevingne didn't ruin Paper Towels. For, uh, paper, paper Towels. <laughs> it's a bounty. The Paper Towels movie. I, if we just came she up did. with an idea for a Paper Towels movie, it'll wipe the floor God. with every oh movie God. this it'll summer. It'll wipe the floor. And the bounty guy is the lead. Uh, yeah. Okay. And the, the bear? What's yeah. the bear? Charmin? Uh, Charmin. Yeah, yep. the bear. Mm -hmm. I've, I've never got that. You literally have their main enemy. television commercials where bears talk about wiping their asses. Yep. And, and, that, and that's the whole marketing campaign. It's amazing that uh, we haven't seen a Paper Towels movie. Like Swiffer's their main enemy. Uh, they're being brought on by uh, all kinds of uh, Clorox wipes. The, the market is just insane it's right limitless. now when it comes to paper towel enemies. Yes. So to answer your question, I, I think the big bomb, unfortunately, I mean, cross my fingers, hope for the best, let's go in, maybe the movie will be awesome and incredible. Yeah. We want every movie to succeed, but I if, if I'm, I could be wrong about this, I think I heard they spent like $175 million making this movie. I think they're going to lose a lot of money. Right now I on, hope not, on IMDb it says $197 million euro. Which would like two fifteen? That's, that's around two hundred fifteen million dollars. Oh. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot of money. I, I just that means this movie's got to make somewhere in the neighborhood of four twenty to four fifty to break even. To really break even. Yeah. Oh god, that's a lot. That's Here's a lot. hoping. Let's hope for the best. Yeah. All right. The next question comes to us from Sandra Johansson, who writes. Hey, Collider Crew, I'm a big fan of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise, and all the films have a special place in my heart, even though none of them have been truly great. After last year's TMNT Speed Out of the Freeze. Shadows made only half of what the previous film did on the worldwide box office, 200, uh, $245 million compared to $249 or let me try that again. <laughs> $245 million compared to $490 million of yep. the first one. Is there going to be another sequel? If not, how would you like to see the Heroes in a Half Shell return? I would love to see a TV show adaptation of the original comics bringing a darker, more violent version of the Turtles to the screen. You know, the Turtles, I, I, one of my favorite things in this job are when there are movies that I, that are movies that are coming out mm -hmm. that I am convinced are going to be garbage. Yes. Like just convinced it's going to be garbage. Mm -hmm. Turtles, not not uh, out of the shadow, but the one before. The first one. Yeah, the first one that just recently came out. I that was one such movie. I talked for a couple I actually of years. Really enjoyed that movie. And you know what? I did too. Yeah. And that is one of my favorite things. Is when I think a movie, I'm convinced a movie's going to be garbage. You know what? Uh, the first J.J. Abrams Star Trek was another one of those for me. Yeah. I thought that was going to be a total waste of time, garbage, mm -hmm. and I really loved it. And I really liked that first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Not so much out of the shadows. I will say. 
I thought that the CGI motion capture turtles that they'd created, who were gigantic, yeah. were going to be uh, a little distracting for me. And, and I found that the most distracting thing in Out of the Shadows was the script. Uh, and I wasn't, I thought that I that the first one, because listen, I love the original Ninja Turtles. Love it. I think it's a great movie. And I even really like Secret of the Ooze. I know that a lot of people hate it. And the Bebop and, Rock, Bebop and Rocksteady are silly. And it's, and it's a terrible movie. But I really enjoyed both of those. I mean, Vanilla Ice doing the Go Ninja, Go Ninja, Go. Go Ninja, Go Ninja, Go. It's, it, they are fun, fun movies, and uh, they had a lot of fun. I think the first one had that same kind of feel to it, had a lot of fun. The second one almost took itself seriously, right? A little, a little too much so. And you and know what? We, lo- we both love Stephen Amell. I so. thought that was great when they ca- – and, and you yeah. know what? He could have been an awesome Casey Jones Agreed. had they not – written a bad movie, misused the character, all that kind of stuff, which is really unfortunate because I thought he could have been great in that and movie. Here's another thing. Megan Fox, say what you want about her movie career, uh, you know, Transformers. She never, she's gorgeous. I mean, to, to, absolutely gorgeous. Oh, but when absolutely she's on screen, she there's not a lot to her that I'm like, man, I can't wait to see her again in a movie. But her on this season of New Girl and last, like, she was, less, she was really good. Great. I yep, think she, she has really a good New Girl. She has a great, uh, a comic, a comedic timing. I think she a could dry do some humor, humor real about dry her. Yeah. humor. She could do um, some awesome stuff on TV or even do some comedy movies that I would love to see her in. Do I need to see her in another big budget action movie? I don't think so. Yeah, uh, I mean, going back to the question though too is will they? Will there be another one? I mean, we, you can never say never. Mm. I highly doubt it. I mean, because you, you point out yourself, it dropped in half. If you're going to spend that much money on the yeah, movie, you too. can't. Like, you can't make 245. Million. You can't no. lose, drop by over 250 million dollars going from one movie to the next. That doesn't bode well for it. There will, at some point, be another incarnation of it on the mm-hmm. big screen. I'm sure. I think there are new TV series is launching every year yeah, of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They, I mean, there are video games as well. The original, the, the original Ninja Turtle Game Boy game back in the late eighties was uh, great. It was a good game. But I will say that I, you, whenever I bring up the turtles, I always talk about this. But I just want to keep hammering it home. If you're asking what kind of turtles would I like to see next, okay, the Crane. original. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I'm not talking about the cartoon. I'm talking about the black and white comic book, the actual origin of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I don't think I've ever read it. It is wonderful. Okay. And it's, but it's totally different. Really? I mean, it's still the same four turtles okay. and, uh, you know, Splinter and, and Shredder and all that kind of stuff, but it's black and white. Hmm. All the original comics were black and white, and it was dark. And it was brutal, and it was violent, and like you hear Michelangelo, see, kind of you, you see, you read in the thought bubbles of Michelangelo, I she unsheath my sword, ready to to leap into the action where the blood will stain into the streets and blah, like all this kind of stuff. And as they're fighting ninjas, not like, whoa, we're ninjas. Foot, no, foot no, clan. it's the foot, and it's ninjas, and it's shredder, and it's killing, and it's harsh and it's amazing and wow. that's and, and it was there was none of this let's eat some pizza cowabunga dude stuff <laughs> it was none of that it was amazing if you have not i'm sure you can probably find them online somewhere too find some of the original teenage mutant ninja turtle stuff and read it it's really great stuff I'm it's interested. how they became popular in the first place but that i've always just had an incredible hunger to see that teenage mutant ninja turtles live action animated whatever brought to a screen i would love to see interesting it. okay never heard all right let's move on the next question comes to us from lucas who writes i've been listening to most of your shows for a while now and i love them i like when you compare movies but i have never heard you talk about master and commander what do you guys think of it uh it's tied for my favorite movie of all time with the empire strikes back wow that's pretty big whoa um I will mention Master and Commander because look, everybody, my favorite actor, and I think the number two best actor alive, to, not even alive today, but working today, and my favorite actor is Russell Crowe. Uh, and Gladiator kind of changed my life. Like, oh, I Gladiator, love so good. That movie, and you know, I, it gets better every year. Yes, yeah, it's it's the kind of movie that. Um, yeah, like it holds a special place in my heart. There's three movies for me that, as far as drama goes, comedy a totally different realm. But as far as drama goes, there's three movies that really changed everything for me. As far as being a person that enjoyed a movie to a person that really wanted to talk and and be passionate about movies, and that's Goodfellas, Braveheart, and and uh, and Gladiator, and the Gladiator especially. Uh, there's just something so perfect about that movie uh and and russell crowe because russell crowe before that was in inside man and yep. and he was 
I don't know, like 50 pounds overweight, something like that. And he acted circles around everybody. Around everybody. I mean, and he was and nominated for an Oscar, I believe, for that role. Yes, he was. And, yeah. and a certain, I believe, Al Pacino was in that movie. Yeah, yeah. And he, and that was the movie that I went, who the hell is this guy that's right. in the movie with Al Pacino and acting circles around and him? And just an awesome. And then he comes. Mystery he, Alaska? Mystery one of the most underrated sports movies of Absolutely. all time. Absolutely. You know? I love that film. Hank Azaria, maybe his best performance. Mike Myers. In, I know. I know. <laughs> it's, it's a special kind of hockey, and they you know they build that arena, and it's just a... I'm getting chills thinking about Mr. Alaska. But Russell Crowe in Gladiator was unlike anything that we may... Because they've tried to do so many op like epics yeah. since that of like Braveheart, Gladiator... I don't know what I would say the last great epic of that one was. Well, of course, Braveheart came before Gladiator. Gladiator. But I'm yes. saying, you know, like yeah. at the after Gladiator, they kept trying to do epic after epic after and epic. And none of them, and worked, none as of them well. worked as well. And Gladiator, uh, man, I, I mean, just, I can't talk enough about that movie. But back to the guy's question. He's asking about Master and Commander. I thought I would like Master and Commander way more than I did. I thought it was honestly a little boring. Really? Yeah. See, I liked it quite... I liked it a lot because to me it was really more of a character. I think it advertised, and this is the movie's own fault. I think a lot of people went into that movie expecting some kind of high seas adventure movie. Correct. Because they that's kind of how they marketed it. Yeah. And really it's a character study. The movie's a character movie. And I love the chemistry between him and Paul Bettany. Mm -hmm. And of course that's the second film that I believe they've one of them two together. They did that and they did A Beautiful Mind together, uh -huh. which they were also dynamite in. Yeah. Bettany, Bettany is, is one of the great underrated performers I think of today. But as a character movie. I got this wrong real quick. The Insider, not Inside Man. My oh, right. Inside, Inside Man is the one where I believe Jude Law is the, the villain at the end. Or, right. or either Clive Owens or Jude Law ends up, is the, the bad guy in it. Anyway, um, so yes, I really enjoy that movie an awful lot. It's got Russell Crowe my favorite performer today terrific chemistry between him and Paul Bettany and it was such a, when it came out though I remember it being such it, so much promo behind it it was such it was, it was the yeah. epic scale of it all and that's how they promoted it and then it kind of bombed and nobody really ever talks about it yeah it kind of disappeared off the zeitgeist of most people's minds yeah. except for people like me who appreciate <laughs> Russell Crowe out of 10 what would you give it even an 8 8 yeah solid yeah. solid big 8 I'd, I'd have like a 6.8 yeah. trending towards 7 but it, I mean, again I think I was sold of a false bill of goods and got a different movie, and had I been sold it as being this yeah. amazing Russell Crowe that epic. has a huge effect yeah. on people. Yeah. All right, the next question comes to us from El Elena, Elena Stedman, who writes, Stedman, who writes, on another episode of Mailbag, you mentioned that you have 23 full-time people on your in your studio now. But I'm always hearing from YouTubers how difficult it is to make any money on YouTube. I ask this respectfully, but how do you guys afford it? Thank you, and keep bringing on the filthy. We all can't afford it. We, we don't pay them anything. We are we are unpaid employees. <laughs> we sit here and talk into cameras just for your enjoyment. We give Josh uh, shelter. And lunch uh, once a week, one lunch and a water fountain and a water fountain. Yes, yeah. it's, <laughs> not, it's not filtered, but I don't mind. You're amazing at sink showers, yes. by the way. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate and, it. Uh, yeah, no. Um, so here's yeah, you're absolutely right when you hear that YouTubers are saying it's incredibly difficult to make any money on YouTube. It's it's absolutely true. So a little bit of inside baseball here. I've mentioned this before, but really, that was YouTube purposefully trying to get people to come in and then watch them take all their money. <laughs> but that's besides the point. Go ahead. Um, so, I mean, for from our point of view, yeah. I mean, if we were if how, if our main revenue model was YouTube, we would be, be able toast. to have four people yes. on staff as opposed to twenty three. Yeah. Um, and the twenty three doesn't count part time and occasional talent and all that freelance. Kind of, all that. Yeah. The, that's the the number just balloons up to like into the thirties. But um, our revenue model is that. Uh, the kind of the way it's shaken out, I don't want to give too much away, but we make other programming other than for YouTube. Mm -hmm. And you remember our show uh, that we did, Film HQ? Film HQ. That's a show we produced, but another network paid for it mm -hmm. and licensed it. Uh, awesome Tacular with Jeremy Johns is another mm -hmm. example of a show that we produce, but somebody another network pays for it. There's mm -hmm. other shows we have that we do and some things that people know we're involved with and some that they don't. A lot of branded um, content. Yeah, a lot of branded content, stuff like that. So really, that's where, and, and those types of deals make a really significantly bigger, we're talking about bigger dollar values than, sure. than what you do in YouTube. So really, we do YouTube for our audience. Yes. 
we do the other stuff for the f- for the for the mo- for the finances for the money of it, yeah. and we love the other we, stuff we do. Correct. We love Film HQ. We love Awesome Tacular. We love this other stuff that we're doing as well. Uh, we we have a really great time with it, but that stuff generates the revenue for us to operate, and then a part of our operation we love doing YouTube for the audience. Like anything else. Uh in the digital space, really, and streaming, television, whatever, you have to be doing just about everything in order to make a living. So whether it's hosting a show, writing for something, creating a show, producing a show, doing everything humanly possible in order to stay in front of the camera or stay working in the industry that you want to do, you got to hustle. Yeah. All right, thanks for the question. We move on now to the next question, which comes to us from James Wallenberg, who writes, Jimmy. Hello, Clyder crew. With several big titles still to come out in June. I read titties. <laughs> <laughs> of course you did. I just, I saw, uh, titles, it, it, the way this spawned is. With several big titties still bad. to come in the month of June. <laughs> I was like, why did you pick this question? <laughs> My bad on that. I apologize. <laughs> Who has several big titties? Okay. <laughs> With several big titles still to come out in June, which one do you think will dominate the box office the most? Cars 3, Transformers, Despicable Me 3, or Baby Driver? It's crazy to think like we're halfway through June and these movies are still to come out this month. And three of them are animated. And our three, that's right. So we got uh, Cars and 3. basically Transformers me. is almost animated well, at this point, too. <laughs> so two of them are animated. Yes. yes. Um, one sort of and one's... Uh, I'll tell you the well, one, baby, the one. Dr- oh, wait. I'm thinking of Baby Boss. No, no Baby no. Driver is that awesome one with... Uh, Ed, uh, well, Edgar Wright is directing it. And uh, what, Ed, uh, Ansel Edgort. Yep. El- Elgort. Oh, man, that movie looks incredible. That movie looks fantastic. Yes. Absolutely fantastic. But we, I think we know the answer to that. I well, think like I the, the one answer. I'm looking forward to the most out of those. Well, I, and, you know, actually, as of by the time you view this, we're uh, doing this show on, we're recording the show on Thursday. Mm-hmm. By the time you're viewing this, Cars 3 has already come out. Okay. I did not like Cars 3. And I'm, I'm a massive Pixar apologist. I, I love, love Pixar deeply. There uh, has been like this much buzz for Car 3. It's Car not 3. good. Okay. It's not good, unfortunately. But, and, yeah. and, you know, I have a passionate love for that company. But uh, this one didn't quite work. Okay. Um, Despicable Me. Look, I love Despicable Me 1 and 2. Thought they were great. Yeah. Uh, Minions, not so much. But I was going to say, Minions doesn't count in the in the original saga. No, in the I, saga. I don't know. Well, it's a prequel. Yes, if you right, right, right. Before Grew. They go, <laughs> it's BG. <laughs> Like 20 G- BG before okay. grew is how they okay. measure their years. Um, <laughs> I, but, but now, I think mostly because like the minions are great side characters. Yes. It doesn't work if you try to make them the focus. So now we're going back to Despicable Me, where Gru's the main character, the minions are the supporting characters. Mm-hmm. I've loved the first two. I have no reason not to expect that I'm going to love the third one. But still, Baby Driver, Edgar Wright, uh, Jamie, I think it's Jamie Foxx yep. is in there, Kevin Spacey, uh, your boy from Walking Dead. Um, Andrew Lincoln? No, I. Well, isn't the guy who plays the guy who plays Punisher? Um, oh, uh, Frank Castle, it, uh, uh, wait, John Barenthal. Is, is, I think John Barenthal's in this movie. Um, I could be mistaken, but I think he is. He is. Yes, Thank you, John Barenthal. John Hamm. Um, yeah. Cara Delevingne. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> there she is. There's old eyebrows, McGee herself. <laughs> Like, <laughs> God, she's a beautiful she, I, woman. She's I didn't say she is gorgeous. stunningly gorgeous. I okay. said it. it's just something about those eyebrows look right in my soul, and they're like, I'm gonna rip out your kidney. Um, <laughs> but I, I think without question, the movie that I am, I'm not not least. I was probably looking forward to Cars Three less, but uh, is is Transformers eighty four? What is it? Five five point six. Yeah, Transformers five. Uh, I can't even remember the name of this one is. Uh, Revenge of the Fallen? No, that was an older one. Cool. Um, <laughs> what is it? The, the Last, Last Night. Night. Okay. Got it, got it, got it. <laughs> it's a Transformers yeah. bachelor party yeah. comedy. <laughs> Transformers. <laughs> Last Night. Um, I don't, I like, come on. Does anybody doubt that that's going to be the. Like, Optimus the... is bad. Not <laughs> my Optimus. Yeah, it's. It's it, going to be, it's going to come. Cl- you know, I don't think it'll make a billion worldwide, but it, it, it probably might. 750 to 800 million. But it'll Easy. come close. It's, it'll come close if not break it. Yeah. Uh, it's going to, that's going to be the biggest number wise. But I honestly think Baby Driver is going to be the, 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 the smash, like, not smash it, the secret hit of the summer that's going to have amazing word of mouth. I hope so. And, um, I think we're going to see some like cool possible um, award season kind of talk about Baby Driver. Fingers yeah. crossed. I was actually just talking with Edgar Wright two days yeah. ago. Okay. And I'm hoping I'm going to have something to announce soon. Awesome. But, yeah. Right. yeah. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not starring in any movie or anything like that. On uh, next much week's smaller, mailbag, <laughs> much, much Edgar smaller Wright. Scale, but I'm, <laughs> we'll keep it okay. Uh, let's move on now. Joshua Levesque. Levesque? Levesque? Let's go with Levesque. Levesque. Right. 
Hey, Collider crew. I love your shows like Movie Talk, Jedi Council, and Heroes. Thanks but for the TV Talk shout out. Appreciate it. What has happened to your trailer reaction and review videos? Yes, you can talk about them more in depth as a segment on Movie Talk after they drop online. But I and others would love to see more of the crew react to the trailer live to see their excitement, facial expressions, and vocal responses. Okay, well, I... I answered kind of a similar we question about to this. this. We've talked about this before. Um, yeah, but. So, it, yeah, it, so it basically comes down to this. Um, we do all of our stuff in the studio. Yeah. If a trailer drops in the evening, we've all seen it. Yeah. Uh, when an amazing Spider-Man trailer drops and I'm at home and I'm not going to be at the studio for three more hours, I'm not waiting three hours to watch the Spider-Man I wasn't waiting until 9.15 to watch the Black Panther trailer with you guys and then come oh and my, do a no, so, no, seriously, a dead, dead serious. The, so the Black Panther trailer drops, which is a great trailer, yeah. drops on a Friday night. Yeah. And like Sunday, and I'm, you would not believe how many angry tweets and emails, like accusing us of being racist. Because oh, God. why won't you do a trailer reaction for Black Panther? And it's like, we're, we're not at work. Yeah, we're yeah. not at the studio. It's a Friday night, There's people. I'm nobody sorry. nobody there. It's like, we'll yeah. be back in studio Monday and we'll... Can't wait to talk about it on Monday. We just don't have, we don't have like a specific studio set up for trailer reactions with a specific setup of like camera and camera. It takes manpower. And you were asking before, how do we pay all these employees? We pay these employees <laughs> by doing a lot of things. And sometimes it just, we don't have the ability to well, do the yeah, reaction. Well, on top of that, sometimes we'll come in too, like a, a, a trailer would have dropped like at midnight the night before. And yeah. we'll come in in the morning, we'll go, has anybody not seen the new Wonder Woman trailer? Right. And everybody's seen it. I'm and we're not like, we could lie. Like we could, like we could deceive the audience and just put people in the reaction videos and pretend like we haven't. Watched I went yet. to acting school, John. I'm a great actor. <laughs> but we respect our audience yes. more than that. We're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. But oh my God, seriously, the amount of tweets I got too is like, if this was a Justice League trailer, you would have done a reaction by now. It's like not if it dropped on Friday night, because <laughs> <laughs> we're not there. Yes, absolutely, one hundred percent. I mean, there's been some that. The only time I feel like we are all like on a night that we're not usually in the office is like Super Bowl because we're going to get some bigger trailers and then run and do a reaction video. Super like Bowl, a Oscars, yes. um, the, a few Shit. other occasions. When we get together to watch things, yeah. right? But for for us to kind of sit around and not, I don't want to say, we have lives too. <laughs> so <laughs> we wives. <laughs> yeah, wives, lives, girlfriends, boyfriends, whatever. You... We need to also recognize that we will eventually talk about it. To us to be able to do immediate reaction videos, that doesn't just clog up your night and my night. If let's just say we want to do the reaction, it clogs up an editor's night. It clogs up somebody to post, release, write a description. It's a, it's a group effort. And a lot of the, tra the, the, the recent trailer reviews or trailer reactions, I should say, we've done like has had people like Grace in it, Wendy, and yeah. things like that. And they're and, great. And, and they are great. And I've gotten emails like, how come... Like, uh, why don't you put like Christian in that? Why don't you put Campy in it? Why don't you put McCook in it? Because it, we we asked around who hasn't seen that new trailer yet, and it was Wendy and it was Grace. Sure. <laughs> the rest of us had, and so they're willing to get up and make that video for you. But it's tough. So there's a couple things. It has the trailer has to drop when we're here. Yep. Because there's no point in dropping a trailer reaction 18 hours after the trailer comes out. I mean, Correct. there's just no point. So we have to number one be here, and then those of us who are here have to have not seen the trailer yet. And if those circumstances don't line up then we can't really do a trailer reaction Agreed. Just, and, and be honest at any rate and we're we're committed to being honest we're trying to be genuine just for you guys <laughs> all right guys that will do it for our time for this installment of mailbag thank you so much for joining us this weekend i want to thank you guys very much and i want to thank josh mccuga for being here josh where can people find you online uh, you can find me on twitter instagram at josh mccuga the josh mccuga show on youtube and collider tv talk every monday here in collider so we'll be here tomorrow and a uh, happy father's day to all you fathers out there yeah happy father's day to everybody yeah. out there including my dad best man I've ever known. And uh, you guys can follow me on Facebook and on Twitter just simply at John Campy. That'll do it for us, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. And until next time, bye-bye.